Hi, I'm Lucy, your narrator. Thanks for joining me for another video, and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. Before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. And also, please watch this video to the end to see the preview trailer and some behind-the-scenes photos. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner is a comedy and a drama movie directed by Stanley Kramer and it won two Oscars. It was released in the USA in 1967 and it stars Sidney Poitier, Spencer Tracy, and Katherine Hepburn. And some of their co-stars were Katherine Houghton, Isabel Sanford, Cecil Calloway, Bea Richards, Roy Glenn, and others. The movie is about a couple's attitudes are challenged when their daughter introduces them to her African-American fiancé. And now for some behind-the-scenes trivia and tidbits. Katherine Hepburn's character's daughter is played by Hepburn's niece, Katherine Houghton. And Katherine Hepburn had to use her salary as backing in order to make this movie because Spencer Tracy was so ill that the studio didn't think that he would make it to the end of the picture. The film debut of Isabel Sanford, who later gained fame as Louise on The Jeffersons in 1975. In 1981, she became the first African-American woman to win an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. And veteran stuntman and longtime Spencer Tracy stunt double John Hutchkins appears as the disapproving cab driver and does all the location driving. Later on, he doubles for Tracy in the car crash scene. And in this movie, Sidney Poitier plays Dr. John Prentice, a black man who had been previously married to a black woman with whom he had a child. His second marriage will be to a white woman named Joanna. In his real life, by the time Poitier filmed his movie, he was divorced from his first wife, Juanita Hardy, a black woman with whom he had children. And he was still about a decade away from marrying his second wife, a white woman named Joanna. Interestingly, the name Joanna is one of the English equivalents of the Spanish name Juanita. Both are feminine forms of the male name John or Juan. And due to Spencer Tracy's health, the cast was always working from two shooting scripts, one with Tracy and one without. Typically, Catherine Hepburn brought Tracy in the morning. They worked until she decided he was too tired and then Tracy and Hepburn would leave. Sidney Poitier, who already had received a Best Actor Oscar for Lilies of the Field in 1963, was intimidated by working with two legends and preferred to perform to empty high-backed chairs. In the scene near the end where Spencer Tracy gives his memorable soliloquy, Katherine Hepburn can be seen crying in the background. This was not acting. She knew how gravely ill her longtime friend was and was moved by his remarks about how true love endures through the years. And the film's last scene was Spencer Tracy's last scene ever filmed. It took a week to shoot the scene, and at the end, he was given a standing ovation by the crew. He died 17 days after filming was completed. And this was the ninth and final film that Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn made together. And Katherine Hepburn never saw the completed movie. She said the memories of Tracy were too painful. And the three-inch bronze sculpture of Spencer Tracy featured in the film was created by Katherine Hepburn and was one of the items that was included in her estate auction in 2004. 
The bust was the most sought after item and fetched the most money. It sold for $316,000. Introducing Katherine Houghton. Three Academy Award winners and a bright young newcomer combine their talents in a love story of today. I haven't even told you his name. <laughs> Mom, it, it's John Wade Prentice. Isn't that a lovely name? John Wade. Joanna Prentice, I'll be. What the hell is going on here? I love your daughter. There is nothing I wouldn't do to try to keep her as happy as she was the day I met her. But it seems to me, without your approval, we will make no sense at all. That is why I'm asking for the clearest possible statement of what your attitude is going to be. I appreciate that, Doctor. It's uh, almost in the form of an ultimatum. Not quite, Mr. Drayton. All you have to say is goodbye. Do you mean if we've been to bed together? I don't mind you asking me that. We haven't. He wouldn't. Until today, I would never have believed that I could say such a thing. But when she fights you, I'm going to be on her side. But you don't own me. You can't tell me when or where I'm out of line or try to get me to live my life according to your rules. <laughs> Dad. You're my father. I'm your son. I love you. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now and be blessed.